Would you please stand? Please be seated. Friends and family, welcome. The Apostle Paul tells us in the letter to the Romans, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. This is why we are here today. In this celebration of the life of Magda Khalil, Gigi, a devoted wife, a loving mother, a kind sister and aunt, a faithful friend. We gather to weep, but we also gather to rejoice. As much as Gigi was a great wife and a great mother and a great friend and a great sister and aunt, her deepest and her truest relationship was with her Lord and her Savior, Jesus Christ. And because of that reality, that reality was so seen, so obviously in her life, in the ways that she prayed, in the ways that she sang, the way that she counseled, the ways that she raised her boys, the ways that she loved her husband, as some of you will speak of today. Because that love for Jesus was so pouring out of Gigi in so many ways, we can today with confidence come and not only weep with Maher and Behi and Rami and their families, but we can also rejoice. Rejoice in the hope that a sister in Christ has been brought into the presence of her Lord, where there is no more weeping, where there is no more pain, where there is no more cancer, where there is no more death, just Jesus and joy. I don't know how many funerals you've been to in your life, but this one, this one will be different. Uh, this is meant to be a celebration, a celebration of a life lived to the glory of God, a life that we will miss, but a life that was very well lived. So may God, may God receive all the glory this afternoon. In a moment, we will uh, sing, sing several songs, in fact, and for those of us who's first language is English, Uh, you can hum along, uh, but do understand this. Uh, We will sing some songs, and what I want you to know is that two of those songs was written by our sister. Uh, So they may even be new for you who speak Arabic, but listen, all of the songs, whether they be in English or in Arabic, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we uh, continue our service today, it will proceed as described in the program in front of you uh, with the songs and the tributes in that order. As we begin, though, let me pray for our time. Let's bow together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the example of a life lived to your glory. Some of us have known Gigi for a long time, some only for a brief while. But Lord, we are thankful for the life that was given over to you in a life that so well demonstrated the love and the mercy and the faithfulness and the goodness of her God. We thank you for Gigi. 
And on this day when we come with tears, we miss her. We do come with tears, and we remember her as a wife, as a, as a mother, as a sister, and as a friend, and we miss her. But Lord, we do not want her back in this place. Because right now, she is with the one whom her heart has loved for so long, and who has made her whole. He has healed her of her sickness. He has healed her of her sin. And she now sits as a bride before you. Oh Lord, oh Lord, would you comfort us today who remain, we who mourn her loss. In trying to rejoice, we also weep. Lord, would you comfort us in an unusual way, Maher, Behi, and Rami. Would they receive grace and mercy for their hearts this day? Be glorified, Lord. Be glorified. The life we now celebrate was a work of your hands. So we worship you, our creator and our redeemer now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As we continue our service together, uh, we begin now a time of worship uh, to the Lord. And I would ask if you would, uh, family and friends, uh, please stand with me as we sing together. Not only the choir is going to sing, but as Pastor Craig mentioned, all of us will sing the first hymn written by Gigi. Long time ago, decades ago, it says, Lord, your righteousness is truly high. You are my only shelter to rest when I strive. You are my only comfort and hope to survive. You are the only person to give me new life. You are the only star. You are my star. Those who can sing in Arabic, Ilahi biruka ila ala laysa siwak. Gigi played the accordion. She excelled and she mastered this instrument and to honor her I'm playing accordion today
The next song written by Gigi, it says, Lord, I can see you with every morning breeze. And the chorus says, I long for you. Lord, I need you. I long for you. I want you. I long for you in every day I live with you. Your voice, your touch, I need no more than watching you. You are my friend, my star, my start, my end. My life is you, I long for you, and my content abides in you. I believe that the Lord has accepted her prayer. She, she, she prayed for years and years, Lord, I need you. I want to be in your presence. And she is in his presence forevermore.
another uh, song that we will sing together that uh, Meher asked me to put it in the program. This is the march of the followers of Jesus going to heaven. In the parade of the conquerors, in the parade of those who conquered in Jesus, following him to heaven. Uh, in Arabic it says, في موكب جيش الغالبين. In the first verse, for those who understand our language, it says, عندما شمسي من هنا تغيب. You know, in the Bible, there's an analogy of those who die, especially early, in a young age. In Jeremiah 15, it says, her son went down while it was yet day. Have you seen a sun going down when it's yet day? However, the Lord in Matthew 13 said, then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Even if the sun sets early, before the sun set, it sets when it is yet day, it happens. That's his plan. The Lord is good all the time. Yet, Gigi and all those who love the Lord will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. عندما شمسي من هنا تغيب عن قريب تضيء هناك في موكب جيش الغالبين بكل فرح with joy we're gonna sing this one I wish we had that translation we would have loved singing it it's a march that's why please I ask you to stand up while we're singing this song <laughs> Thank you. 
I see two scenes. One heavenly and one earthly. The one on earth, there is a sense of loss, sorrow, and pain of departure. The one in heaven, a sense of gain and celebration. Definitely wonderful sense of gain to Gigi because it was her desire for many, many years. As, as we, and as we were singing, it, were, it was her longing to be with God, her beloved Jesus, the one she loved for many years and she loved dearly, and she longed to be with him. Sense of gain to Gigi. And sense of gain to Christ. <coughs> because he was also longing that she will be with him. That she will took off her physical body so that she can really enjoy him even more deeply and more fulfilling. Sense of gain to all the saints across the history as they welcome their sister, Gigi, to their place in paradise. And therefore, there is celebration in heaven. And our prayer this afternoon, that this sense of gain and celebration in heaven will invade our earthly meeting today and be encouraged and supported by it. Amen. I'd like to speak today about a few lessons that I learned from the life of Gigi. And maybe also for all of us. The first lesson I would say, Gigi tells me that intimacy with God is possible. Intimacy with God is possible. Most of us here, we have our own relationship with God. But do we really enjoy intimacy with God? Do we know this, this word? Do we experience intimacy with God? One of the towering figures across the Christian history is Teresa of Avila. Teresa lived in the 16th century. She was a simple lady. But in spite of that, she was a towering figure in regard to spirituality. And she became a counselor for many bishops. She wrote three books, considered to be among the classics of Christian spirituality. One of her books titled, forgive me, The Christian Castle. It speaks about the Christian journey towards union with Christ. And she sees seven phases for those who have been born into the Christian family, who are enjoying God as their father. Seven phases that they go through. The first three ones are the ones that most of us are living in. As we come to know him, but still we come to know him with, with a baggage of struggles, weaknesses in our own characters and personalities, still struggling with our own sins and wrong habits, trying to learn how to pray, trying to learn how to understand the Bible, trying to make sense of our relationship with him. 
the first three phases, many people, many Christians, many born again believers, they wander in these phases. And many of them, they don't cross to the fourth one. The fourth one, she says, it's about she calls it the illumination phase. When the person, as he learns to humble himself before God and open his inner being to God's love, he receives new revelations day after day about the wonderful love of our Lord Jesus. As, as the person receives such revelation, he starts to really love God and love him with the inner being and longs more and more for more revelation and learn more and more about God's love and becomes more and more transformed unto his image and responds to God's love with deeper love, with more commitment to him. phase of illumination, which leads into three phases of different degrees of union with Christ. As the person comes closer because of the, this new illumination, coming to know the wonderful love of God, he's drawn or she's drawn into closer relationship with God. And day after day, he experiences deeper and closeness, deeper relationship and closeness to God, gets into the intimacy relationship. And when we think of the life of Gigi, she's not like me or many of us here. She's passed the first three phases. She passed through the illumination phase. Definitely she passed through also the phases of union with God. Again, look at her songs. Read her books. And you and I will discover how deep she had a relationship with God. Her understanding, her mind that was enlightened, her heart that was enlightened. She knew God's love not as information, but as deep, deep in experience. It, it is an experiential re relationship. And therefore, he became her first love. And she gave her life utterly and totally to him. Yes. In spite of being successful woman in her career with a PhD degree, assistant professor, wonderful wife to a wonderful man, wonderful mother to wonderful two, bo two boys, wonderful sister to her sisters. But in spite of all this business and life, she had her time and place with God. And he was first. And because he was first, she was really successful and blessed in all these relationships and responsibilities. Sometimes as we live in this world, and we wonder, could it really be possible that we enjoy intimate relationship with God? We're busy. Life is full of distractions. Well, not only the people of the old were able to find intimacy with God. Not only Teresa of Avila of the, of the 16th century was able to find intimacy with God. But even in our 21st century, Gigi was able to find intimacy with God. I need to have this hunger and thirst as she had it, this desire as she had it, this faith, the
that God is able to reveal himself and draw me closer to him and make me experience him in the depths of, uh, of my inner being. I was reading her books in the last week. And every word speaks about this very true reality in her life. She's not writing words. She's not quoting verses. She's speaking about this, this truth that has become an experience in her life. So she challenges me for intimacy with God. She lived the words of David, the beautiful words The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad, my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure in your presence. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I love you, O oh Lord, my strength. Second lesson, that I, I can live in pain, but still love God. Pain is part of our human experience, and maybe it differs from one to another the degree of pain that we go through. Some of us, we go through occasional pain. Others, they go through continuous pain. And most probably, many of us, we wonder, why pain? If God loves us, why pain? In the middle of afflictions and trials, and we ask the question, where is God's love? But Gigi answers all these questions to me and to all of us. She went through severe pain for many years. But she never asked the question, why? She never complained. She never questioned God's love to her. And her, her commitment to him never changed. She continued to love him, to worship him, and to praise him. The four books that she wrote about worship and praise. She wrote, she wrote them after she discovered that she had cancer. And that tells me about her faith. Her faith of God and her knowledge of God. And in spite of cancer and in spite of her life that has been threatened for many years. And in spite of the pain that she, that she went through. She encouraged not only the close family and friends to give thanks to God and to worship Him, but even the church of God. 
And she led worship. She wrote uh, songs, 40, about 40 songs. words and composing the music and singing to God and loving him, continuing to worship him and give him thanks. In fact, when we read these books, I just read them. She mentions clearly and repeatedly that it's our calling to give thanks to God in all situations. We trust his goodness and his love. And she speaks about the blessings of pain. The blessings of trials, how it purifies the soul and helps the soul to grow and to mature and be transformed. And yes, Gigi grew more and matured more and transformed more through the pain that she went through. It was her desire that joined the desire of the Apostle Paul, that I might know him. The power of his resurrection and even the, his sufferings. Gigi tells me and tells each one of us, God is good. And pain does not change the reality that God is good. That the incarnation and the cross is the final revelation about God's love and God's goodness. And we need not anymore to ask the question, where is God's love? We can just trust him and submit to him. And find grace that sustains us throughout. Wonderful lesson. I pray that I will learn it in my life and live by it as she, as she did. Third lesson. She knew how to live for God and to die for God. She lived for his honor. Almost 40 years of living with him, she lived for his honor. As I said, she honored him by praying and praising and serving other people. She led worship in different churches, and it, she was a great blessing. She read books, wonderful inheritance, the books and the songs that she composed that will continue for many generations, that they will be inspired by this. She lived for God. But also she died for God. As Paul says, if we live or die, we live for Christ and we die for Christ. Whether we live or we die, we are the Lord's. And she was the Lord's. Those who were around her in the last few months, as she was really deteriorating, getting ready to depart, she was dying. In the process of dying, that she was transforming and transfigured more and more. You can see the peace. You can hear the good words and the encouraging words. You can feel the sincere love in her heart to each one. Care. She died to the Lord. Many of us, we were last night at the visitation service. Yes, it was honoring to God. 
her death was honoring to God. And today, her death or this service is honoring to God because we all witness that she was a true disciple of Christ. She lived and died for his honor. And it was her cry to be with him. And she received at last her wish and desire. Still we know it's not easy for the family and for the friends. Especially for Maher, for Rami, for Bahi, Sonia, Nelly, and all the rest of the families. It's not easy. Losing a wonderful person like this, it's not easy. But I want to close with the words of Gigi in one of her books. She quotes the words of Paul. She believes it. She believed in the God of all grace. And I'm sure that before departing, she committed you to the God of all grace. And the God of all grace will sustain you, will be with you to continue your, your life and your witness and your calling, to finish the race as she did. Trust him. All of us here with her prayers, we commit you to the God of all grace, who gives abundantly. whether in Egypt or in Kuwait or in Canada. This kind of choir is the choir that Gigi grew up singing at. <clears throat> this is four voice choir, the soprano and the alto. She was a great alto, and tenor and a bass. This song is speak to my Isaiah 41, when the Lord says, I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This is the verse of the hymn. The chorus uh, has an ending. The, the last word of the chorus says, Thou, you, are not left alone. She asked Maher to get her a picture, a photo of Jesus that was at home. She told him, Maher, please, tomorrow, bring this picture. I want it in my room. 
in the hospital and she got it she put it you know the pain of her illness and the side effects of so many drugs and medications made her she couldn't take it but she sang this song one time Salwa went she asked her to sing this song one time I went myself she asked me to sing this song she wants to hear you are you are not left alone I will invite you to sing the last verse with me but the first three verses and the two choruses will be sung by the choir I will ask you to join in the last chorus
في القرار Stand up and pray. نقف ونصلي مع بعض. يا أبونا السماوي بنشكرك يا رب لأنه لا مثل لك بين الآلهة ولا مثل أعمالك عظيم أنت وصانع عجائب. يا رب بنحمدك وبنشكرك لأنك رائع لأنك صالح وإلى الأبد رحمتك. نعم بنقول كده علوت جدا أيها الرب الإله. علوت جدا في الارض وفي السماء ليس مثلك ليس مثلك اله يا رب في محبتك في امانتك في رعايتك يا رب بنعظمك لانك صالح للكل ومرحمك على كل اعمالك عظيم انت وصانع عجائب جايين نسبحك النهارده ونباركك ونحتفل زي ما كنا بنسمع جايين بنحتفل يا رب كده ببنتك يا رب بحياتها يا رب اشكرك من اجل جيجي ونشكرك يا رب من اجل شخص سماوي جنسيتها من السماء يا رب نشكرك لان فعلا كده يور ماستر بيس يا رب انت يا رب عملتها وانت عجنتها وانت شكلت فيها يا رب نشكرك من اجل حياتها ونشكرك من اجل عملك خلال كل السنين يا رب جايين بنفتخر بعملك الرائع العظيم نشكرك من اجل فعلا كده بحسب ما هو مكتوب كده نظرين مجد الرب بوجه مكشوف نتغير الى تلك الصوره عينها من مجد الى مجد نشكرك من اجل هذا الاناء اللي كان بيعلن مجدك دائما باسم الرب يسوع نشكرك يا رب كده من اجل انك انت هو القيامه والحياه نشكرك اننا ككنيسه النهارده جايين بنفرح ونحتفل ولا نحزن كالباقين لكن يا رب نشكرك من اجل الرجاء ونشكرك لانك انت القيامه ونشكرك يا رب من اجل هذا الجسد يا رب كده اللي سيقام بقوه مجدك باسم الرب يسوع نشكرك لانك صالح والى الابد يا رب جايين مجتمعين معا وبنصلي باسم الرب يسوع يا رب انه كل شخص شاعر بالالم بسبب الفراق انت وحدك اللي تعرف هذا الالم يا رب تعالى والمس كل شخص يا رب بنرفع بين ايديك ماهب بنرفع بين ايديك باهي بنرفع بين ايديك رامي بنرفع بين ايديك اخوات جيجي يا رب وكل العيله باسم الرب يسوع ويا رب على قد ما كانت جيجي يا رب انسانه غير عاديه انت عارف ان ده قد ايه بيسيب الم وفراغ لكن احنا بنثق في نعمتك الغنيه انك انت تيجي بقوه الروح القدس وتنزع كل الم ومش بس تعزي لكن يا رب كده بنتجرا اننا بتصلي وبنطلب انك انت تسكب في كل قلب فرح لا ينطق به ومجيد يا رب زي ما سمعنا النهارده كده بنصلي من اجل اننا نسبى بالمنظر مش المنظر الارضي لكن المنظر السماوي منظر يا رب المكسب العظيم ان جيجي في السماء معاك يا رب نشكرك ادينا اننا نحتفل النهارده بكل القلب في اسم الرب يسوع وبنفرح يا رب تعالى انزع الالم بالكامل يا رب انت اللي تقدر تعمل هذه المعجزه في اسم يسوع ومش بس تعزي لكن تفرح يا رب وبنصلي ايضا في اسم يسوع كل شخص بيحب جيجي يا رب كده مكتوب انه اذ لنا سحابه من الش... من الشهود هذه مقدارها اشكرك يا رب من اجل بنتك الشاهده الامينه لك والنهارده جايين بنتحد بحسب وعدك اذا اتفق اثنان على شيء يكون لهما بنصلي انه زي ما استخدمتها 
يا رب اثناء حياتها على الارض باسم الرب يسوع احنا بنصلي انك تستخدمها بقوه غير عاديه حتى بعد نومها ورقادها يا رب احنا بنصلي انك تستخدم كل ترنيمه تستخدم يا رب كل كتاب كتبته بقوه الروح القدس يكون سبب بركه غير عاديه يا رب احنا جايين بنصلي يا رب كده ان حياتها تكون مؤثره مش بس للناس اللي شافوها وتعاملوا معاها لكن للناس ايضا لم يعرفوها يا رب لانك انت عظيم وصانع عجائب بنتبركك يا رب لانك انت اله امانه نعطيك كل المجد الى الابد امين امين بليز يو ميك سيتد Gentle, compassionate, sacrificial, sincere, patient, and perseverant. These are just a few words that I can use to describe the woman that I had the honor of calling Mama. Mama was a sweet lady with an appreciation for simple, modest things. She demonstrated the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. which in God's sight was very precious. Mama was an incredibly compassionate and gentle mother to us boys. She lived in a home with, with three men, uh, and that was a difficult task for her, uh, but, but she had such a softening influence on us all. And needless to say, Mama was thrilled when we got married, and, and she loved our wives, Imre and Sarah, like her own daughters. And Mama taught me practically the importance of God's word and its ability to change us even at a young age. She met with God daily and loved reading his word. And I remember regularly noticing a distinct difference in her demeanor and her joy after she had spent time with God in prayer and, and in his word. And I struggled as a child with, with anxiety and, and mama would, would put up scriptures on my wall about God's goodness and sovereignty, and I would read them every night, and God used this simple step of obedience to, to heal me. And Mama prayed for us and continued to pray for us until the very end. She always told me that, that she has four goals in life and that she prayed for daily. And they were that, that I would know Jesus as my Lord and Savior, that Rami would know Jesus as his Lord and Savior, and then that I would find a godly wife who loves Jesus, and that Rami would find a godly wife who loves Jesus. And Mama was overjoyed to see her prayers answered. Mama also lived a life of purpose, and you've, you've heard this a lot today, that uh, growing up, we, we, we always knew that she loved to worship God through music. Her, her sweet voice and her beautifully playing the piano were a common fragrance in our home. And she instilled in us a, a love for music and a love for worshiping Jesus through music. And for that, we're, we're very thankful. Then we began to see uh, new depths to Mama's character when she was diagnosed with cancer 11 years ago. Uh, she showed perseverance and strength in the midst of deep suffering and pain. She embraced suffering as a calling from the Lord. She chose not to complain and chose to continue to worship in the midst of her suffering. She clung to the response uh, that Job had to trial, saying, Though he slay me, I will hope in him. She continued to show compassion and care to others, even while she was sick, as, as you've already heard. One example is uh, just throughout, throughout her, her years of illness, she would accidentally make too much food. Or, or she'd accidentally buy too many groceries just so she could bless us with, with, with food. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 4 say, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction, with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. So throughout Mama's illness, she lived out the scripture with excellence. 
God used her to comfort many who were sick and dealing, dealing with similar pain, and she pointed them to Jesus and provided practical care and comfort to so many. Mama was uh, diagnosed with cancer at a time, uh, a time where I was going through a spiritually dry season, and, and God used Mama to bring me to a deeper knowledge of himself. I watched Mama lose many of the things that would have given her her identity, uh, her, her health, her comfort, her career, yet she chose to worship, and she chose joy, and she continued to run to Jesus for comfort. And how was all this possible? I continued to ask myself, and uh, I saw very clear that it was possible because, as you have heard many times, it was because Mama loved Jesus. It was evident that she had an undeniable intimacy with her Creator that was unshaken by life's circumstances. She knew that Jesus had taken care of her biggest problem, her sin on the cross, and had offered her his own righteousness so that she can have an eternal, intimate relationship with him. And Mama loved telling people about Jesus. Uh, during this past Christmas season, she decided to um, give little Christmas gifts to all the medical staff who were caring for her. She wrapped up DVDs of the Jesus film and gave them to everyone whom she came in contact with. And she did this despite being in a lot of pain. And some days, one of the only times I would see Mama smile was when she would softly say to someone, this is a Christmas gift for you. Mama knew that, that Christ's grace was sufficient for her and that his power was made perfect in weakness. She counted it all joy when she met trials of various kinds. She knew that the testing of her faith would produce steadfastness. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 9 to 11 say, For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. Mama was confident that what she was going through was not God's wrath. She knew that her illness was not a result of a lack of faith. Her love for Jesus was incorruptible. And her suffering drew her ever closer to her Savior. And she was faithful to the end. As a son, I'm, I'm so thankful that when Mama fell asleep, as, as the scripture said, uh, she was immediately with Jesus. In the midst of her grieving, in the midst of, of, of our grieving, um, I have been so comforted by the truth that she is, has now met her Redeemer and has perfect joy where there is no more cancer, no more pain, no more sin, and no more tears. She has received her reward, and she is now with Jesus. Mama loved sitting in this church right back there and worshiping Jesus. And she, she saw this as a small glimpse of what her reality in heaven was going to be like. One song in particular that Mama loved to sing goes like this. It says, when I wake up in the land of glory and with the saints, I will tell my story. There will be one name that I proclaim. Yours will be the only name that matters to me, the only one whose favor I seek, the only name that matters to me. Yours will be the friendship and affection I need to feel my father smiling on me, the only name that matters to me. And the song goes on to beautifully sing the, the name of Jesus. I truly believe that if there is anything that Mama would have wanted you to know today, it would be that the real hero of this story is Jesus Christ. Mama has woken up in the land of glory among the saints, and the only name that matters to her right now is the name of Jesus. She has woken up free from all her sickness and sin and has seen that it was all worth it. I'm so honored to have been loved and taught by Mama and to have called her my friend. And I'm so thankful to have been able to observe her faith, and I'm filled with hope, knowing that she is being cared for right now by Jesus himself. Thank you.
Thank you everyone for being here today. The love and support that uh, we've received for a long time now, and especially this past week, has been extraordinary. Uh, from all the prayers to the words of encouragement to all the meals that were dropped off, we really are so thankful uh, for this community that the Lord has blessed us with. All of you being here is a great testament to the person Mama was and, and how the Lord used her so effectively. So thank you. Before I start, I want to take a minute to honor a couple of people. Uh, first, I want to honor my aunt, Nellie, um, who is Mama's sister. Uh, when, ma when Mama was admitted to the hospital, Nellie didn't hesitate to get on the first plane from the U.S. and come here. Uh, Nellie spent about a total of six weeks, day and night, with Mama at the hospital, caring for her around the clock. So uh, thank you, Nellie, for all you've done for us this past couple of months. It's been a huge help for, for Mama and for us as well. I also want to honor Baba. For the past 11 and a half years, Baba meticulously monitored Mama's treatment, ensuring to the best of his ability that all of her medical needs were met. In the more recent months, when Mama was at the hospital, Baba did not spare a second for himself. He would work long days, and as soon as his shift was done, he would go to Mama's room right away and spend the rest of the night with her. He rarely left her side. Baba, I've never seen a person be more Christ-like in their selflessness and their sacrifice. You have been a great inspiration role model to me, and my desire truly is to be more like you in the way I love and serve my wife. So thank you for all you've done. As most of you already uh, have figured out by this point that Mama's uh, theme in life really was praise and worship. She lived her life selflessly, consistently placing others' needs as more important than hers. Uh, when Bay and I were young, both my parents sacrificed a lot of their savings to put us in a very good private school. Another example of Mama's selflessness was uh, when she resigned from her job as an immunobiology professor in Kuwait and left everything she had known behind to provide Bahi and I with a better life in Canada. And even when she was ill, when I lived at home, Mama would always be the first one up in the morning, making our lunches for work and making sure I woke up when I hit the snooze button too many times. And everything she did for our family, she really glorified the Lord. I feel like I had a special connection with Mama because I've inherited some of her personality traits. Uh, both of us were so direct that we could have a one-minute conversation that would have taken somebody else half an hour. I also believe that my love for worship through musical instruments uh, was inherited from Mama. Sorry, Baba, but we all know that Mama was the musically talented one in the family. <laughs> if you didn't know, in addition to the piano and singing, Mama also played the accordion, guitar, and the violin. Uh, I'm also so thankful for the guidance and mentorship that Mama provided Sarah and I when we were dating and we were married as well. Apparently, I can be a complicated person sometimes, and Mama did a great job of sitting down with Sarah and explaining things about my character to her. I think that because I was so similar to Mama in many areas, Mama was uh, one of the few people that fully understood my thoughts and my feelings, and Sarah was able to gain a greater understanding of me through her conversations with Mama. Mama also taught me to be more gentle and caring with Sarah. And I can confidently say that my relationship with Sarah has grown so much as a result of the wisdom uh, that Mama imparted to us. She always pointed us to the truth of His Word. And the most recent truth that she shared with us is in Psalm 62, verse 5 to 8, which Sarah will read for us now. For God alone, O oh my soul, wait in silence. For my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times. O oh people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. I love this passage so much because one of the last text messages that Mama had sent to Sarah in the midst of her pain was, trust in him at all times, O people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us all. I also coincidentally read that same passage the morning of my mom's going to be with the Lord. And I believe this passage is so fitting for how Mama lived her life 
especially during her trials, a life of quiet strength and endurance. For the past 11 years, cancer seemed to take control of Mama's body, but had absolutely no control over her spirit and her joy in Christ. Through all these years, she never ceased to cling to Christ as her refuge. She trusted in Him at all times and never stopped praising His name, no matter what the circumstances were. And the natural response of, uh, of her love to Christ was a desire for everyone she came in contact with to know who Jesus Christ was, and nothing stopped her from doing so. As Bahi mentioned, that even when she was in the hospital, she gave away, I believe it was about 60 copies of the Jesus film to, to nurses and, and other hospital staff. I'll forever cherish the moments when I got to play some worship songs and, and sing to her while she was lying in the hospital bed. And all she could do, do at the time was just, just tap her finger to the beat. But now we know that she's not worshiping the Lord by just tapping her finger. She's dancing and she's singing as she sees her Lord and Savior face to face. No more cancer, no more pain, no more suffering for all eternity. You know, when you get to heaven, we won't be complaining about the method in which we got there. And I'm sure that Mama is seeing her Savior face to face and saying that it was worth it all. She looked forward to heaven for many years here on earth, and this is her awesome reality now. <sighs> what a life, what a legacy. Lord, help me to have faith like Mama did. Love you, Mama. Thank you. Thank you, Bay Henry. Thank you, Rami, Sarah. It's so difficult for me to talk about my beloved Gigi. I pray that God can help me in that moment. Of course, if I leave myself, the talk will be here for days and days, but it is a few minutes with few words. For my beloved Shishi. Thank you for all of you who have come to celebrate, to celebrate, to celebrate Jesus' life and glorious departure to her eternal groom, Jesus Christ. first love, the first and eternal groom, Jesus Christ. Gigi is my very, very precious and beloved wife. Very, very precious and beloved wife. We have been married for 32 years. <clears throat> In 1977, we decided to be together, loving each other for the glory of God, putting Christ first. In 1981, we got engaged. In 1984, we got married. Gigi was a real gift from God to me. God blessed us with two wonderful sons, Bay and Rami and two beloved daughters-in-law, Emery and Sarah. Gigi was always reflecting the beauty of Jesus in genuine, sacrificing love, faithfulness, humility, meekness, gentleness, mercy, and compassion. She was very intelligent. She was very organized, hardworking, dedicated, and people-oriented. Always, she gave excuses for mistakes of people around us and friends. Always give excuses for them. 
Gigi accepted Christ in 1973. And he continued to be her first love throughout her life. She glorified his name in all ways. And when Gigi accepted my proposal for marriage, I cannot forget. She told me boldly, boldly, that her only condition is that Christ will be and would remain her highest master throughout our life. I agreed. <laughs> and actually, that was reassuring me regarding our future marriage and life. When I turned 50, some of you were there when I turned 50 in the party, special one that Gigi did it for me. She made me a book of 50 precious biblical verses. I have it till now. I'm reviewing maybe every day. 50 precious biblical verses for my life. On the front page, she wrote to Mamuha. <laughs> oh, my beloved. Mamuha is the nick, that's her personal nickname for me. It's Maher. It's Mamuha. Happy 50th birthday. And one of the most significant promises was the one we chose to be our wedding theme from Jeremiah 32 39. I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for their own good and the good of their children after them. Another two very encouraging verses from my life were Psalm 56, verse 3. When I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. And Daniel 10, verse 19. And he said, O man greatly loved, Fear not, fear not, peace be with you. Be strong and of good courage. She knows that I'm easy to get afraid of things around me. And God blessed me with these verses that I'm reviewing every day in that time. Beloved man, fear not, I am your shepherd. I am shepherd. I wake up every morning these days, tears, but I hear this voice. I am your shepherd. I will remain your only redeemer and shepherd. Take care about your life. A message just came to me yesterday and somebody sent it, texted to me to confirm it from God that uh, bottom line, I will take care about you every day. I was and I will remain your redeemer and your shepherd. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus accepted God's calling for her life to be a real worshiper. She based this calling on Psalm 66, verse 1 and 2, which says, Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Make his praise glorious. She was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write and to compose about 40 sweet, passionate, wonderful songs. She was actually one of the pioneers who introduced a new era of praise and worship into the Arabic church. This had had a great impact until now. The seed of true worship and praise that Gigi has planted in our home will continue, by, will continue to grow by the grace of God and only for his glory. And only for his glory. I know she's hearing and she's in great joy now. The plant that she already put it will grow for his glory. So she wrote an anointed four-part series on praise and worship called Make His Praise Glorious. Soon after we arrived to Canada in 2004, Gigi was diagnosed with cancer. And she started to receive her second calling in life, which was to proclaim his perfect, unfailing love and reflecting his glory, but through pain and suffering. Through pain and suffering. 
based on Psalm 52, verse 8 and 9, which says, But I am like an olive tree, flourishing in the house of God. Jesus shared that with me many times, by the way. I'm just put, not, not putting, just choosing one of the verses. She told me, this is my second calling. I trust in God's unfailing love forever and ever. For what you have done, I will always praise you. In the presence of your faithful people, and I will hope in your name, for your name is good. For your name is good. Gigi humbly accepted to be squeezed, squeezed and crushed. I can witness, especially in the last six years of recurrence. Squeezed and crushed as an olive for the oil of anointing to come out of her and spread the wonderful fragrance of Jesus and speaking loud about the glory that God deserves. Yes, it was an oil reflecting the fragrance of the beloved Jesus. She believed in what Jesus said about the resurrection and glory that comes through the cross based on John, Gospel of John 12, 23 and 24 and 28. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. She believed that life can come and blessing for others through cross, through sacrifice, through accepting the death. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again through the cross. She believed what the master already had. She had the footsteps of her master. Glory out of the cross. Not all people know that Gigi's email address do you know what is Gigi email address? Do you know it? Gigi dot glory to God. <laughs> she chose that. Glory to God. Gigi. Glory to God. At gmail.com. <laughs> Try not to send her any email now. But if you want to send an email to Gigi in the spirit, send it like this, please. Gigi dot. Glory to God. At the face of Jesus Christ dot com. At the face of Jesus Christ dot com. She is now in front of his face. Eternally. For his glory. If you want to send her, please use this new email in the spirit. In your prayers. Gigi impacted the lives of people around her. First, she impacted me. I learned a lot. And our sons and daughters. And lately, the team involved in her medical care through direct and indirect witness to Christ. I'm sure that Gigi is now in complete joy and freedom. She's pain free. She's cancer free. She's singing and dancing with full power and very loud voice facing the eternal groom, Jesus Christ, who himself took her home while her spirit was departing from the body. I have this belief. He didn't send an angel. I was, that, I was there in that moment. And I felt that Jesus Christ by himself is inviting her to the great wedding to honor her. She has fought the good fight. She has finished the race. She has kept the faith. And she will be rewarded on that day with a crown of righteousness. She has now been granted many new songs. And she's playing them on her golden piano. And soon she will have a new name as well. Gigi was a wonderful daughter of God. Humble servant of Christ. True worshiper. Excellent musician. Great wife. Sweet tender mother wise counselor and close sister and friend to many people. I really thank God for Gigi. I really thank God for her. No words can express how much I will miss her. 
unexpressible. But my only hope is that my God, the Holy Spirit, will comfort my heart and heal my inner wounds and lead me in his perfect future plan. Perfect future plan. I want to thank uh, all the pastors, church leaders, and brothers and sisters, friends, who have been involved in our spiritual and physical care. I would like to give special thanks to my colleagues and the medical team who have been involved in Jesus' care, Jesus care while being in the hospital, either Credit Valley Hospital or Ogwell Trafalgar Memorial Hospital. Today, in this glorious moment, I want to recall what Jesus said about master and servant in the parable of talents in Matthew 25, 21. Do you know what did Jesus said? He said, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will sit you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And Gigi now, in front of the face of Jesus Christ, who is full joy with her master. That's comfort a lot, my heart. So Gigi ha has heard this direct, uh, these words directly from Jesus, I believe in that. And I would like to repeat them at this time and, and ask you to join me in applauding Gigi for her faithfulness. May I ask you to stand up for a second, please, with me? I want to tell to Gigi, we are together, the same words of Jesus Christ to her. Well done. Well done. you well done. Now you can enjoy the full eternal joy and glorious liberty of children of God. Well done, well done, Gigi. Well done, Gigi. That's the report of your master. Well done, and we are so proud of you. Well done, servant of Jesus Christ. Do you know who is ultimately deserve the applause, honor, and glory? Is the Jesus Redeemer and eternal groom, Jesus Christ. I want to tell him, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He is the one. He is the one who serves. He is the master. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. In Revelation 7, they said, Salvation belongs to our Lord, to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. Amen. Blessings and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Will you stand with me? We're going to sing these songs together. <clears throat> Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. 
Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercy. I see and all I have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness Lord unto me in their chorus above join with all nature and manifold witness to thy great faithfulness mercy and love great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see and all I have needed thy end hath provided Lord unto me pardon for sin and the peace that endureth thine own dear presence to and to God strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings all mine with ten thousand beside and great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see and all I have needed thy hand hath provided Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto Like a river attendeth 
my way when sorrows like sea billows roll what is Thou hast taught me to say It is well, it is well with my soul And it is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul, and it is well, it is well with my soul in my sin. Oh, the bliss of this glorious thought My sin not in part but the whole Oh, is nailed to the cross oh, and I bear it no more oh praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul and it is well With my soul, with my soul, and it is well, and it is well with my soul. For me. Christ tends to live if Jordan above me shall roll and no pain shall be mine for in death has in life all oh, thou wilt whisper my peace to my soul and it is well it is well with my soul with my soul it is well, it is well with my soul. In Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sighed the clouds be rolled back as a scroll oh the trump shall resound oh and the Lord 
shall descend oh even so it is well with my soul and it is well it is well with my soul with my soul and it is well it is well with my soul Amen. Amen. please be seated As we bring our time together uh, this day to a close, a time of tribute, a time of worship, a time of celebration, uh, the family has asked that I would share just a few announcements with you. Uh, the first is that all of us are invited uh, to join the family at the internment at Greenman Greenwood Cemetery immediately after this. Now, given the, group, the size of our group, it would be uh, great if we could carpool together. Um, and also letting you know that maps are available as you leave the service and we'll proceed together uh, to the cemetery. However, if you would choose to stay, we want you to know as well that refreshments are available for you in the lobby and the family would love to receive your well wishes and love at that time when they return uh, somewhere after three o'clock. Uh, just so you know that there is no receiving line after the service, which is uh, common in Egyptian culture, but rather the reception will take place after the internment and back here at the reception. Uh, also at the reception as a special gift for you, uh, the family has made available uh, some of Gigi's books and they'll be available for you after the funeral if we would take one per family. I would let you know though that they are written in Arabic, so those of us who speak English, we will have to wait for the translation. Um, and then the last thing I wanna do is I wanna introduce the final song. And the final song that we will depart with is, is called You're Beautiful. And it will be played over us. And we would ask that as the song and the video is played over you, that you would allow the words of worship and deep reverence to be upon your hearts. But I want you to be aware of one thing. Uh, this is not a sad song. It is a song of victory. A victory that the Lord Jesus Christ has won for Gigi and has won for all of those who have called upon his name for salvation. In the middle of the song, I will ask you to stand and to honor and bless the family as they would leave this day. Now it's my privilege to pronounce the benediction. So if you would, please bow with me as we close our time together. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient but the things that are unseen are eternal. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses now. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes upon Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is seated at the right hand of God on high. And now, Lord, to you, who is able to keep us from stumbling and to present us blameless before the presence of your glory with great joy, to you, the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, be majesty, be dominion and authority before all time, and now and forevermore. Amen.
Would you please stand?